pick up. We picked up. Uh, Tate. I think Tate showed up. Anyway, we got a few more people here. Good. All right. So we're going to talk about inverse trig functions, which is um, section 3.5. So uh, we're going to do the same thing with trig functions. Um, so the the basic thing is this is kind of so y equals the inverse sine of x. Well, it looks like sine to the negative one power. That's what we refer to as inverse. And you can think of it as finding the angle. So the inverse sine of one half is 30 degrees or pi six. Uh, for the definition of the sign, maybe I should make these a little bit bigger. I think they're a little hard to see. Oh, it's just going to let me. All right, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Hopefully about the same size. All right, so uh, the y, y equals the inverse sine of x if and only if x equals the sine of y. So uh, your domain is, uh, the sign has to be between negative one and one, and y, your range, is between negative pi halves and pi halves. With the cosine, it's uh, the same basic thing. Um, your domain, x between negative one and one, your range, y, is between zero and pi. So in both cases, they have a range of pi units, but uh, in the case of the inverse sign, we go from negative pi to positive pi halves, or excuse me, negative pi halves, positive pi halves, with the cosine, we go from zero to pi. So um, hopefully you guys can remember this, find the exact value of the inverse tangent of square root of three over three, who knows what that is? Thirty degrees. <clears throat> Very good. Pi six, thirty degrees. Okay. Um, how about if we find the inverse cosine of negative square root of two over two? What would that be? That negative one fifty or one fifty degrees. Um, you check your quadrants, it would be three pi fourths. Remember, it's pi fourths, but we're in quadrant four, so it's going to be right here. Can you can you just explain that a little bit more? So I'm, I'm just getting a little confused when it's like the so the inverse tangent or the inverse of like even going back to that initial one, the inverse sine Me of too. one half. Can you yeah, just you're just trying to find the. You're just trying to find the angle. So probably the easiest way is if we're using the unit circle. Um, okay. Did I close my, did I close it already? Um, if you're using the unit circle, remember? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't make that straight, whatever, that's close enough. Okay, so if we assume this is the unit circle, so mm -hmm. this, these will all be one, and um, you know that the sine of, I don't know. The easiest way to, I think, to think about it is just what's the, uh, oh, never mind. Um, so uh, you know that the uh, sine of 30 degrees is one half. Mm -hmm. So the inverse sine of one half is going to be 30 degrees. Oh, okay. So okay, that makes sense. Sometimes it's easier to think of it in terms of, well, what's the sine of that? Sine of 30. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Okay. So it works the same way with the inverse tangent. You know that the tangent of of pi six is square root of three over three, so the inverse tangent of square root of three over three is pi six. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Same with the cosine. Um, cosine of the negative square root of 2 over 2, you know that's going to be um, in quadrant 4 because, sorry, over here. No, that's 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 something else, but <laughs> I need to talk about that in a minute. Um, so we know that the inverse cosine of square root of 2 over 2 is 45 degrees or pi fourths. But now it's negative, so we're in quadrant 4, and so therefore it's going to be 3 pi fourths. Okay. Um, all right, so let's talk about graphing. The, this doesn't really have anything to do with this here. Um, but the uh, sine of x uh, goes from 0 to 2 pi. It's your typical sine wave. If we're doing the inverse sine wave, remember everything gets, you can think of it as kind of being flipped 90 degrees. Um, and so your x's and y's, everything's going to flip. So instead of having your amplitude from uh, 1 to negative 1, that's going to be your domain now. So it goes between negative 1 and positive 1. Um, and it's going to be flipped like this. So, um, so that's how your graph is going to look. Um, now, if we do the sine of the sine inverse of 0.357, we're just going to get what's in the parentheses again, because essentially the sine and the sine inverse are going to cancel each other because they're inverse functions, and you're just going to get x, which in this case is 0.357. You're just going to get the argument back. So... Does that make sense? Think of it if, if this is a square root and you square, you're just going to get your x back. Okay. All right. To find the tangent, the inverse tangent of the tangent of 4 pi thirds, once again, you're just going to get the argument back. So that's just going to be 4 pi thirds. You're going to, because these two, our inverse functions, you just get what's inside back. So um, when we talk about the compos composition of trigonometric functions, um, if x is between negative 1 and 1, then the sine of the in inverse sine of x is just x, and that works also with the cosine of the inverse cosine of x. You're just going to get x. Uh, works also with the tangent. If x is any real number, then the tangent of the tangent inverse of x is just x. Um, just a reminder, if your x is between negative pi halves and pi halves, then your inverse sine of x equals x. If your x is between 0 and pi, your inverse cosine of cosine is also x. And if x is between negative pi halves and positive pi halves, your inverse tangent of the tangent of x is just x, okay? Um, pay the table on page 258, you're going to definitely want to know that. Um, as we look at the uh, tangent of x, remember your tangent of x goes from low to high. You've got asymptotes at negative pi halves, positive pi halves. Um, the inverse tangent everything's going to flip, so your asymptotes are y equals negative pi halves and negative pi halves, and it's going to, sometimes we call this an S-curve, but yeah, it looks kind of, basically it's the same shape on its side. Works as well with the cosecant, as long as your x is between negative pi halves and pi halves. Of course, x cannot equal zero now, we do have, and I wish they'd draw the asymptote here. I, when, if, if I ask you to draw um, the cosecant of x, you should be drawing an asymptote at uh, x equals 0 right here. Um, and, of course, we're talking about just the one unit there. Um, we've also got an asymptote on the inverse cosecant. You've got an asymptote on the x-axis. Um, x is going to be less than or equal to negative 1 or greater than or equal to 1. Your range is y is between negative pi halves and pi halves. So once again, we're flipping the x's and the y's. Um, you're, well, 
we guess you call this the amplitude is from one to negative one. Here we're going to call it the domain is from x negative one to positive one, and your y is going to change as well. Uh, works the same way with the secant. I'm not going to keep repeating myself here, but uh, basically, and the cotangent as well. Um, just remember that we're drawing the asymptotes in here as needed. I don't know. It's, it's funny because they drew them here, I guess, because you have the asymptote of pi halves and negative pi halves. They didn't draw them on the, uh, this is uh, from the book, on the cosecant, they didn't draw the asymptote here, but remember that you should include that as well. So. Any questions on table 3.2, which is on page 258? Do we need to memorize what's on that table? Pretty much. Okay. Um, all right. So let's do an example. Find the sine of the inverse cosine of two-fifths. In fact, I'm going to copy this, and we're going to say, how would you find that? Maybe I'll start with a new page. Okay, so... Start in the middle of the class today. We're going to start with uh, Jackson. So Jackson, do you got any ideas on how we would find the inverse, the sine of the inverse cosine of two fifths? Um, I would just start with the cosine and figure out what angle that is, and then put okay. the window sine. And how would you do that? Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to draw a triangle. Okay. The hypotenuse be five, and the adjacent side be two. Uh, I can't draw a triangle. Okay, so you said your hypotenuse was five. Mhm. Mm and your adjacent side was two, so we're calling this our angle. We call this the angle A, let's say. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay, so that's the cosine there. And so um so what would this side over here be? Uh that's going to be the square root of twenty-five minus four, which is the square root of twenty-one. Did, did everybody catch that, or was that too fast? I guess that was fine. All right, so, so this cosine just re represents some sort of an angle alpha here. And now, what would be the sine of alpha in this case? Um, it would be square root of 21 over 5. Okay. I didn't draw the right. Square root of 21 divided by 5, just like that. Okay. So that was nice and easy, right? Okay. All right, well done. Um... All right, so there's your answer there. Okay, find the sine inverse sine sine of the sine inverse of three fifths plus the cosine inverse of negative five thirteenths. I'm going to open up a new page here. Okay, let's see here. How about Josue? Could you do this one? You're on mute, by the way. Yeah. Um, oh, well, I don't know. 
how to do that, to be honest. Okay. Well, we're going to do the same way that Jackson did it. Let's draw a couple of triangles here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, that's close enough. Okay, so let's call this angle alpha here. And we're going to call this angle beta. Okay. Okay. So uh, could you figure out the sign of alpha here? The sign of alpha? Well, the hypotenuse is going to be five. Hypotenuse is five. And the opposite is going to be three. Okay. So mm -hmm. that makes this side's got to be what? Uh, four. Four. Okay. And then let's do the same thing over here with the cosine. Mm -hmm. We're gonna so think of this as your alpha, and this as your beta. Okay. Uh, and for that one is gonna be the pattern is thirteen. Okay. And the adjacent is going to be negative five. And so what about this one? Okay, give me a second. Um, okay. Well, for that one, it's going to be the square root of 13. Uh, Okay, can I do it on my... Here, I'm going to help you with that one. That's a 5, 12, 13 triangle. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, okay, so one way we could think about this is we could write this as the... Um, Sine inverse. Uh, here, I'm going to write it this way. Sine inverse of three fifths, which is your alpha. Here, I'm going to write it this way. Sine inverse of alpha plus your cosine inverse of beta. And then I've got my sign on the outside, which I didn't draw. Okay, so um, all right. So um, let me see here. Okay, so remember, think of this as your alpha. So you could think of this. I don't want to think of it that way. Think of this as your sine of alpha plus beta. Do you know any identities that could help us in this case? Yeah, I think it's the, the double trigonometry. No, it's some, some different it's the, identities. It's the addition one, right? Addition one. Okay. So how could you rewrite that as? Um, that's going to be two sine alpha cosine beta. No, it's going to be sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha and beta, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's a plus, not a minus. Do you remember that? Okay. Okay, we 
and I'm a little rusty on it myself, but make sure you know these perfectly well on the on the test. Okay. Okay. All right, because really think this is just an angle here, and and the cosine this is just another angle here. Okay. So if we write this as so the, inside here, we've just got the sine of alpha plus beta. So what's the sine of alpha again? Three-fifths. Three-fifths, right? Three-fifths. And what's the cosine of beta? Uh, negative 5 over 13. So negative 5 over 13. Okay. And then we need to add... What's the cosine of alpha? Uh, negative 5 over 13. No, alpha. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, did you say cosine of alpha? Cosine of alpha. Okay, cosine of alpha. Um, it's going to be 4 over 5. Right. And we're going to multiply that times the sine of beta. Okay, it's going to be 12 over 13. Okay. So now we're going to get negative 15 on the top. Um, plus 4 times 12 is 48. And on the bottom, we're going to get 5 thirds. Let's see, 5 times 3 is 15. Is it 65, I think? Okay. okay. And so that should equal 48 minus 15 is 33 over 65. Okay. Let's see if I did that right. Yep, I did. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, you got all that right here. Okay. I've got a quick, I've got a quick question about that. Um, okay, go ahead. With, with the sine times sine in inverse sine of three fifths, wouldn't it? What couldn't you just reduce that down to three fifths? According to that, if, if if there was a parenthesis after the three fifths, but notice it's the sine of the whole angle. Oh. Okay, I see that now. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. And so that's why that's why we said, okay, well, this here just represents angle alpha, and this here represents angle beta. And so that's why I drew the two different triangles there. Cool, thanks. And then we're using our sum identity thing. All right. Okay, so I've got the little things here. Um, all right, so let's do this one here. Um, solve the inverse sine of three fifths plus the cosine inverse of x. Okay, equals pi. So, what do you guys think we would do first on this one? Let's go to, uh, let's see, that was Josue uh, Ivan. Who puts the name Carl on here? Oh, is he here? Yeah. Okay. You're not on camera, though. Okay. So, what do you think we would do first? Uh, wouldn't you find the inverse of uh, 3 over 5? It's sine, sine inverse of 3 over 5. Okay. That's not one of the angles that we have memorized, though. But yeah, I mean, essentially, this does represent an angle. Okay. We want to solve for x. Oh, cosine of x. So we, you want to leave the, the x by itself? Wouldn't you divide then the co inverse of cosine? Well, we got to get rid of this first. I don't know, Professor Bennett. Okay, so we're going to subtract. We're going to subtract the inverse sign from both sides. 
Does that make sense? So yeah. This is going to be the cosine inverse, inverse of, x of x equals equals pi minus the minus sine inverse of I'll three fifths. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is when I wish that I could type easily. <laughs> all right. So now all we need to do is take the cosine of both sides of well, the cosine of the cosine inverse. That's just going to equal X, right? X is going to equal that, right? So mm -hmm. these two will cancel each other out. Essentially, these are inverse functions. But of course, now I've got the cosine of pi minus the sine the inverse sine minus, inverse well, let's, let's call this A for a minute. Because remember, that's just going to represent our alpha, right? Yeah. And I've got a picture here on the right side. So we've got uh, alpha here. And notice this is going to be a three, four, five right triangle again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, do you remember any identities for the cosine of pi minus alpha? Give me a second. Let me check on my. But from the top of my head, no. Let me check on my okay. list that I have. Hopefully, that will be on the top of your head because, yeah, check your identities. Uh, what's the subtraction identity that we're going to want to remember? And I guess this is a good reminder that we're having a test on Thursday. So hopefully we're going to have this memorized by tomorrow, if not Thursday, <laughs> but especially Thursday. Well, I understand. I'm sorry. It, to be honest, it's extremely difficult to take this class over the over a camera. I only took yeah. this one class on the summer because it's one of my weaknesses in math. And I mm -hmm. was expecting it to do a face to face and it's been really tough to get to keep well it's keep tough face to face too so i'll i'll grant you that <laughs> yeah so sorry about that i am lost okay does anybody know who knows who knows the identity that i'm trying to come up with here cosine of alpha it does oh go ahead who's talking no, corey's got it no corey go ahead <laughs> sorry tate uh, cosine of alpha times cosine of beta plus sine of alpha times sine of beta. Or sorry, in this case, it would be pi. I'm so sorry. I forgot it was pi. No, it's okay. You can just give me the generic thing. We'll fill in the, the thing okay. again. Then plus sine of alpha times sine of beta. I'm going to do it this way, sine of beta. Okay. So in this case, um, okay, well, we're going <laughs> to... We'll do these again. So let's so let's change this to pi, cosine of pi, and this will be the sine of pi, right? And this is going to be alpha in this case, and alpha. Okay, so we just modified our thing so that um, we've got that. So what's the cosine of pi? Negative one. It's negative one. So this becomes the negative cosine of alpha. And what's the sine of of uh, pi? Zero. Zero. You remember that, Ivan? Yeah. Okay. All right. So essentially, what we've done is we've turned this thing here into uh, simply the negative cosine of alpha. So what's the negative cosine of alpha? Negative 
and you've got a picture here to help you out. Are you still with me, Ivan? Oh, is that from, sorry, four over yeah. five? Four over five, right? I'm sorry. All right, so that wasn't too bad, right? In fact, I'm going to erase all this, but that's what we just did, okay? These are my notes. So to solve, first of all, we're going to solve for the inverse cosine and then take the cosine of both sides. So that gives us this, cosine inverse of x equals x, cosine in, uh, of pi minus sine pi halves is the identity we just did, which equals negative four-fifths, okay? All right, any questions on that one? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Um, all right, so now let's uh, solve for the inverse cosine of x plus the, sorry, the inverse sine of x plus the inverse cosine of x equals pi halves. So, um, all right. So remember, let's think of these. This is just going to be an alpha. This is going to represent some angle. So these are going to be two angles, alpha plus uh, beta is going to equal pi halves, right? Essentially, this is, these are two different things here. Now, Really, these are um, this is these are the same angle though. Okay, so we we can actually draw this picture over here on the right side. I'm trying not to give away the answers, but it's going to be a little easier this way. So let alpha equal your inverse sine of x, and beta equals the inverse cosine of x. Therefore, the sine of x equals alpha and the cosine of x equals beta. So we're going to have these two right triangles here. If this is alpha and this is beta, okay? So um, one is going to be our hypotenuse. We know that the sine is x over r. So the opposite over the hypotenuse. So therefore, we can just solve um, with the Pythagorean theorem to get the square root of one minus x squared. So is everybody cool with this triangle for the sine of x? Okay. What was yes? The cosine of x, we're gonna do the same sort of a thing. It's gonna be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. This is your beta. So your opposite side is also gonna be one minus x squared. Okay, square root of one minus x squared. Okay, so the inverse sine of, of x plus the inverse cosine of x is going to equal your alpha plus your beta. So the inverse cosine, we also call it the arc cosine. Um, so if alpha plus beta equals the inverse cosine of cosine of alpha plus beta, Okay, we're going to use our identity again. Um, there should really be a parenthesis here and another one here. Okay, so in this case, uh, we can use our identity for what's in the middle here. And that's going to give us the cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, minus the sine of alpha, sine of beta. Okay. Well, now we can plug in our values from our triangle. So the cosine of alpha is going to be 1 minus x squared over 1. Your cosine of beta is going to be x over 1. And then we're going to subtract the sine of alpha. The sine of alpha is going to be x over 1. So that's your x right there. And your sine of beta is going to be the square root of one minus x squared, which is your opposite over your hypotenuse, okay? 
And we know that the inverse cosine of zero equals pi halves. Okay, so we've got our pi halves. So the inverse cosine of zero equals pi halves. So now, um, so we've we've got our answer right there. So um, I've got a quick question. Okay. Um, so when we get to, uh, so I understand everything, and then when we get to the the inverse cosine times the cosine of alpha plus beta. So why, how did we get to there? From the. Well, this, yeah. this is just our our our, uh, our our addition property of cosine right here, right? Yeah. So that's what we've got right here. And so how did we pick the cosine one? Why did we pick the cosine of alpha plus beta? I guess that's why I'm a little confused. Because that's the one that we know. If we go back to our identities, let me go back. Let me open up another one here. Uh, the sum and difference co-function identities. Mm -hmm. So remember, <clears throat> we've, we this is this is the uh, this is the one we're using here. Mm -hmm. And so we've got an alpha plus a beta. Yeah. So if if we do the inverse cosine, um, then then that. Um, We're, we're, if we take the cosine of this, I mean, I guess you could do it with the sine as well. We just did it with the cosine. Oh, okay, that makes sense uh, then. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So. Does it matter which one you choose, or you can do it with either one? You could do it with either one. I just picked okay. the cosine. So. I have a question. I have a question, and then you broke up really bad. Uh oh. Can you say it again? Or can you type it? Would that be easier to type it? Let's try that again. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is it better? Give me all kinds of warnings. Like, stop. Do not do anything. Your internet's bad. Um, how do we get rid of the the inverse of sine when we're because we're we go from sine inverse of x plus cosine inverse of x. Like, how are we getting rid of the sine when we go down to the cosine, inverse cosine? That makes sense. So remember, these represent just two angles here. So this is an angle, this is, this is angle alpha, this is angle beta. And so, um, so we've just turned these into two different angles, okay? So now, um, so we've got these two angles here and that's just gonna equal the inverse cosine of the cosine of alpha plus beta, okay? Remember, if you take the inverse of, uh, these, these are inverse functions and so you're just gonna get this back. Oh, okay. That okay. makes total sense. Yeah. yeah. So if you were going to use this, if you were going to use the sine one, then it would be inverse sine, um, right? Inverse sine times sine of alpha plus beta. Right. Okay. Perfect. Now you're saying inverse sine times. This isn't. These are inverse functions. It's not really times. It's they're inverse functions. The inverse cosine of the cosine. So that's me being a little bit picky on on the way you said that, but yeah. So, any other questions on that? All right. Um, all right, so let's do the graph of the inverse cosine of x plus one. So remember from earlier on the page here, <laughs> uh, inverse, oh no, we don't have cosine on here, do we? 
Oh, well, okay, I guess we don't have that here. But uh, at any rate, the inverse cosine of x is going to look like this. This, I don't know if that's red or gray line. We're going to call that the gray line, okay? So your inverse cosine is going to, the amplitude would be from negative 1 to 1, and uh, you're going to go from 0 to pi, okay? So the inverse cosine of x plus 1, you're just going to shift everything up one unit. <laughs> So, um, any questions on that? Would it be one to the right that you would shift or up? No, remember, it's going to be up one. Okay. If we were shifting it left and right, the one would have to be inside the parentheses there. But since it's outside the parentheses, it shifts it up or down. So, what's the coordinates for that? Because it just shows, it doesn't I know. show. It's crossing. Pi halves I plus one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't know how this. There's, there's not a good coordinate for that. Um, I'm just saying because for the test, we'll probably have to do the coordinates, right? So, yeah. Um. I probably won't do a lot of shifting like crazy on these because uh, I'll just basically want to make sure you've got the basic shape down. And yeah, so. Gosh, are we done already? Um, that's all I have for today. I, I feel like this is a little bit harder. I don't really want to. Uh... Can we do more examples? More examples. Can we do another example of that, like inverse of the inverse one? Um, uh, I think I've, it's hard for me to pull it. We're going to have to start doing homework problems, I guess. Um, that's fine. You want me to do a homework problem? That's all. Oh, nice. man. I'm so bad. See, I thought you guys would be like, oh, let's get out of here early today. Um, <laughs> If you know how I feel right now with trying to understand everything, I would stay if I didn't have to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, let me see here. Because I've done over all the examples in the book. We went fast today. I don't know why. Um, here, let me see if I can pick... A good homework problem. All right, how about we do 56? I think that's a good one to do. Um, okay, this is number 56. And let me see. The problem is it's so hard for me to write this. I almost need the equation editor. This is going to take a lot longer just to write the darn thing, so it makes sense. Um, okay, so this says 56 is the cosine of the sine Inverse. Verse. This is why I hate doing this. Sign. Oh, that didn't work. Maybe click on the box. There we go. That worked. Um, it 
It's going to take me the rest of the class just to write this darn thing. I can't even see here. Plus the cosine. Okay. <laughs> okay, so how would we find this? I'm going to open it up for everybody. Make sure I've got this written right. Would you draw triangles for that? Yeah, some triangles would definitely be helpful. I wonder if I can draw a triangle in here. Oh, maybe. Except for that's not a right triangle. And I'll have to go back to here. Oh, I saw it. It's in the shapes under basic shapes. And then. Um, oh, there it is. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We'll draw two of those. Try to make them look a little bit different. Okay, so hopefully, anyway, I don't know if I'm going to be able to write on there where those are. Okay, so how would you guys start on this one? So one triangle would be the sign. Uh, I think so this will almost be easier for me. You know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I wonder if I can copy both of these. I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Is that those triangles that you said that we should remember, like the one we used earlier, that it was um, the 3, 4, 5, and then the 5, 13, 12? Right. Are, is, are you asking me if that's what these are? Yeah, we got to we got to prove that they are. Well, the hypotenuse would be four, so I don't think it, it can be. Okay, so on this one here, yeah, the hypotenuse is four, right? Yeah. Oh, I see. But but the other one is five, twelve, thirteen. Okay, and so if we call this angle alpha, right? So. We can think of this as the cosine of alpha plus beta, right? These are just two different angles. Um, so if the sine of alpha, so this is going to be three over here, correct? And if we call this beta, then... Um, so I've got a 5 and a 13. What goes where on this one here? 13 would be the hypotenuse. Okay. And the 5 would be adjacent. So this is 5. So this is a 5, 12, 13, right? Yeah. So we need to figure out what this one is. This one's not going to be a fun one, right? I think it's square root of seven. It's the square root of seven. So that's going to be seven squared mm -hmm. plus nine is 16. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. So that's going to be very useful. I'm going to copy that back over. We'll replace these two. Okay, good enough. All right. Uh, 
All right, so we've got our triangles here, and we've got the cosine of alpha plus beta, right? Do we know any identities that will help us? Yeah, yeah. so that would be cosine alpha times cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. Okay. So the cosine alpha would be the place of the square root of 7 over 4. Cosine beta would be 5 over 13. Remember, it's hard for me to type all this. Yeah, I'm going to try to make this look good. Okay, so square root of 7 over 4. Yeah. And then what did you say? Times 5 over 13. 5 over 13. And then minus sine of alpha, which is 3 over 4. Oh, I didn't want it to underline. Whatever, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, it's, it's sine of alpha, say that again. A 3 over 4. 3 over 4. <laughs> Times the sine of beta, which is 12 over 13. 12 over 13. Okay. So okay. then, 4 over 13 for the denominator. Okay. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 is 5. 52 is on the bottom, right? Yep. And on the top, we've got the square root of uh, 5 square roots of 7 minus 36. And that's your answer. Gotcha. See, these aren't that bad, are they? If you can draw the pictures. Well, that one wasn't that bad. We'll see about the homework. <laughs> well, that was a homework problem. Oh, I know. This is homework. Here, let me do, I'll try to do one more good one here off the homework. Um, what's a good one to pick? I have a quick question as well. Okay. Um, so, so why are, this might be a stupid question. I'm just like not understanding something basic, but couldn't you do the same thing? <clears throat> without having to use the inverse sine, the inverse cosine? Like, couldn't it be cosine of 7, 3 over 4 plus cosine um, 5 over 13, and you get the same answer? I'm not, well, I'm not, I'm not following you. We started with this problem here. Yeah. So I'm just saying, I, I guess I just don't understand why we're using the inverses instead of just using the regular ones because like to me it looks like it's the same thing regardless of whether or not it's the inverse or the I, actual. I think I had the same question. Um, can I attempt to offer an explanation? Okay, go ahead. Okay, and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking the same thing like, well, if we're writing the sine of three-fourths plus the cosine of five thirteenths, wouldn't we draw a triangle and pull out the exact same numbers and come out with the same answer? But it's not, it's the sine of X equals three fourths where we draw the triangle, right? Because the sine of X equaling three fourths is the same thing as the sine, the inverse sine of three fourths equaling x. Yeah. I mean, that's why I rewrote it this way. So a is going to equal this inverse sign here. Sorry, just this piece here. And because, yeah, remember, these just represent angles. So beta is going to equal this. I mean, really, to be honest, these these exercises are just to get you used to thinking in in terms of inverse signs, inverse cosines. But these, these are just angles. The sine of inverse sine of three fourths is just an angle, and the inverse is cosine of five thirteenths is just an angle. A little bit. 
Say that again. again. There was... I, said, I said I'm just overthinking it a little bit, it sounds like. Okay. Yeah. I kind of have the same thing. It's like, what's the point of an inverse when that you're still going to use the same angle to solve the question? The point is, it looks really strange, and we're trying to get used to, you used to strange notation. <laughs> Basically. Okay. <laughs> um... All right, I'm trying to find another good one here. This one looks like a good one. Um, how about this one's number 69? Uh, write each expression in terms of x. Okay, so now I'm going to need my equation editor because this is too hard. The tangent of the cosine, maybe I can do it this way, inverse. Oh, that worked. I didn't even need the uh, darn equation editor. Of x. Oh, wow, I did that one without an equation editor. Even better. So what do you guys think? We're going to open this up class wide. Can you rewrite tan as cosine of cosine inverse of x over sine over? inverse cosine of x and then the top the numerator would be x you could but i don't think that would be helpful do we take the inverse tangent to move it to the other side well we don't know what's on the other side yeah, there is no other side. See, this is good because you've saved me all this time for tomorrow answering questions, right? <laughs> okay. I guess I'm lost. Any ideas? Texas, you got something? I'm really lost as well. <laughs> I'm trying to see if it's. Let me go back to the problem. Okay, tangent so let's think the, about this again. This is just the tangent of some angle. We can call it A for now, right? Right. So, um, so we're just trying to find the tan. What is the tangent of the angle of the of this inverse cosine of x? So, see, cos the cosine of x would be uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. Very good. Let's draw our triangle, right? Right. Oh, you know, I never noticed I had that triangle maker there. <laughs> Why am I making these the hard way? All right, this is great. Okay, so I've got... Okay, so the inverse, if we call this x here, the hypotenuse would be 1. And no, we don't want to call that x. We're going to call that a. Control Z and then, yeah. Okay. So if this is the, co so what would be the cosine of a? So cosine of A, the hypotenuse would be 1, and the adjacent side would be X. Okay. So what's this side? That would be the square root of 1 minus X squared. Or, sorry, I think it's square root of 1 plus 
X squared. Perfect. No, you were right. Yeah, one minus X squared. Sorry. Why is the hypotenuse one? Because anything over one equals itself. Remember, cosine is is adjacent over hypotenuse. Mm -hmm. We just got the cosine of x, so your hypotenuse is. And x can just be x one. over one. Right. Right. Which is that's just what x. x. Right. Does that makes sense. Nope. That but okay. Cool, right? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. No, I don't. I, like, is that always going to be one when you're solving? Is hypotenuse always one when you're solving for well, x? Or you remember that cosine, mm -hmm. cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. Right. Well, this is your adjacent, right? Uh huh. So it's implied to be over one. Oh, uh, okay. Got you now. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right, no problem. Okay, so, all right, so yeah, so we've got our nice little triangle here. In fact, maybe we'll copy it now that we've got everything here. We'll bring it back over to here. Wrap text square, okay. All right, so we've got our thing here. It's kind of big. Okay. So now, We've got our triangle. We can figure out the uh, tangent. What's the tangent of A? It'd be a square root. I'm going to ask Nicole. Oh. Uh, it's the square root of 1 minus x squared over x. I'll see. Well, you know what you're doing. I just needed a visual for the x over 1. Now I get it. <laughs> All over x. Here, I'll just write it that way. Over x. Perfect. Okay. So that wasn't too bad. <coughs> do you want to do another one or do you want to leave? Let me write your quiz. <laughs> I think we got it from here. Okay. How about you, Josue? How confident are you? You feeling good? Okay, Graham. All right, Tate. I have a right, question. Got a bunch of thumbs up. Okay. I have a, I have a quick question. Now that I'm Ivan? Test, don't kill me, guys. Well, Ivan, you're back on camera again. Nice. Is there is there a, a way? You know how if the school was open, you can go to tutor. Is there is that available? Or... Uh, stick that, around for so the study group. I can actually show you how to uh, get the online tutoring. Okay, the thing is, like, I, I got to start work, too. Um, is there a way that you can mess, I can message you my phone number and I can call you? Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, any other questions? All right, <clears throat> so... Well, I'll let you go. We're only eight minutes early today, and you can start on the homework. You can stick around at least for, you know, eight minutes and talk to Texas and exchange phone numbers. And I don't know how the tutoring works. I haven't figured that out. So, so anyway, homework is due on 3.5 tomorrow, and we'll have a quiz on that too as well. So we'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Thanks. Yep.